Hey, crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press, and I'm so excited to be back with you today for a really fun video. I'm going to show you five different ways to use color burst powders. I don't know if you've seen these before, but they are awesome. They're basically like a dry watercolor powder. They're highly pigmented. When you're working with these, you're definitely going to want to protect your hands. Uh, you can either use gloves or in this case, I'm going to be using the um, gloves in a bottle lotion, which works really well. You also want to protect your surface. Um, so I've got a, a just a craft mat on top of a clipboard there, and I'll be using 140 pound heavyweight watercolor paper for all of my panels today. The first technique I want to show you is probably fairly obvious. Um, you can just take your powders, put them into a palette. When you open these bottles, be careful. You don't wanna like accidentally squeeze it all over the place. In fact, you don't really have to squeeze the bottles at all. You basically take off the lid and tip them over and powder will fall out. So I'm gonna put the, the colors from each of the collections that I have into rainbow order. Um, I have the brights, the bright set from um, Contact Crafts, that's the set on the left. And then I also have an older set of the Ken Oliver um, color bursts for Brutus Monroe. I'm not sure that those are available anymore. I, I've had them for a few years, but they are a lot of fun to play with. And I just kind of wanted to put all the different colors that I have out there and swatch them all and, and see what I've got. So I'm just gonna add water to each little section in the palette. And you can either use a paintbrush or use um, a, a spray bottle if you'd like. And then I'm just gonna grab a flat brush for this first panel here and start brushing it onto the panel. And you know, you can use this for watercoloring for real if you're, you're actually coloring images, but I'm just gonna make some backgrounds for all of the different panels today just basically experimenting. So the first one is basically rainbow order of the brights collection and contact crafts has like, I, th I want to say there's like 30 different colors that you can get from them and they come in different sets or you can get the whole big mama collection if you'd like. Um, I set that panel aside to dry and the colors will sort of blend with each other. And then this time around, I grabbed a round brush for I guess less even lines. I wanted them to kind of blend a little bit more rather than with that flat brush. And you can see the green in this collection, the, the first green, or I guess maybe it's the yellow. It's not super bold. That's because I didn't have a lot of powder in there. When I tipped it out, just a little bit came out. And you'll notice both of the purples are really pigmented. They're, they're really bright. Um, and when they dry, instead of regular watercoloring that kind of dries back lighter, these tended to get a little more vivid, I thought. Uh, for that second panel, I decided to go ahead and add some splatter just because I wanted to show you that this is, it's concentrated. Um, so you can get really great splatters with these. And then I let those panels dry on their own um, just to, so they'd be less warped. For the next technique, this is, I think, probably one of the most fun ones. Um, we're going to sprinkle powders onto our palette or onto our paper there, and then we spritz them with water. And people always ask, do you put the powder down first or the water down first? And I wanted to show you the difference. So in this case, I sprayed the panel with water first, and then I'm adding the powder. And you can see it start to bloom immediately. So you naturally will put less powder down on your paper. So this is going to give you, I think, more of a, a speckled look. It, at least it does for me. And you'll notice that that paper, because it is sprayed with water, it's going to want to curl. And I wanted to just sort of let it dry. So you see me holding the panel down with my paintbrush and then giving it a, a squirt or giving it some air with my heat gun. Now we're going to do the same thing except in reverse order. This time I'm putting... The, the powder down first, and then I'm gonna spritz it with water. And it's really hard to tell how much pigment is coming out because none of it's blooming, it's all dry. And I have worked with these before, so I know not to go like super crazy. And again, I wanna mention I'm not squeezing these bottles, I'm just kind of tipping them over and tapping them with my finger. If you squeeze, you're gonna get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> which may be what you're going for. Um, and then you can see now as I spray it with water, it will bloom and that color really kind of takes off, which is really fun. It also wants to blend together more. So you get less of that 
speckled look and more of a watery color look, which I think is quite beautiful. But so that's kind of the difference. And on that first panel that I did, um, the one on the left that you can see there, I could have sprayed it with water after I'd put the powder down again, like before and after, and it would move around a little bit more like the second panel. But I wanted to just kind of keep them separate and show you the two different ways where if you sprinkle powder on before or after. In either case, once they're dry, especially in, in the case where you put the powder down second, come back in with a dry brush and make sure you get any loose crystals off. If they got spritzed with water or if they got wet at all, then it's gonna activate the binder in there and then they should stay in place. But just in case, if there's any loose crystals, you wanna brush them off. And that way your recipient won't get um, loose crystals on their fingers, which, you know, could start to bleed into their fingers. <laughs> the color will get on their fingers that way. So clean them up. The next technique is really fun. So we're gonna grab some of the light molding paste. You can use pretty much any paste for this. Um, I, it, I'm using a white one, you can use clear ones. Um, and there's different thicknesses, glossy, all of that stuff. Feel free, have fun, play with what you've got. This one is sort of a matte finish and it the texture on this light molding paste is kind of velvety. So I wanted to sprinkle some powder on over white paste here and then I'll show you in the next one how to mix it ahead of time but you just basically do this uh, I'm sure you've played with the the molding paste before spread it on with um, like a spatula or a palette knife like I'm doing and then I'm sprinkling some of the colors on top I think I just did um, the two like the red the pink and the um, the more purpley pink in the collections that I had. And then I'm grabbing that palette knife and just kind of dragging it across. I don't wanna really blend it, but I just wanna scrape some of that color around. And it looks really cool. You get um, a lot more texture and more variation. And I did let it dry on my, my uh, clipboard there before I messed with it. Um, and it dries really flat, which is cool. This time, we're gonna mix the, the powder in with the paste beforehand, and this will give us a less streaky look, more of a mixed look. And of course, you can do this with your liquid watercolors or with inks and stuff like that, but the nice thing about these powders is that you're not adding any extra moisture, so it dries faster and you'll get less warping which I think is kind of cool. <laughs> um, and in the case of this light molding paste, it's got this really cool velvety finish and I think it's pretty. So you see, I just kind of put a couple dabs of the molding paste onto my craft mat there. I put some powder in each one. Um, I did the two blues and a green, and then I'm just kind of mixing, I mix the green first and spread that on. You want to clean your spatula in between, and it just wipes off. If you're fast, it'll just wipe off. Um, I would wash it, wash it when you're done, but for this, it's no big deal. And then I went ahead and mixed the first blue, and again, cleaned it in between. And then when I mixed the second blue, it felt really close to the first blue. So... Um, I added in some of that green. <laughs> and then I wasn't quite sure that I liked that color. It seemed kind of close to the other one, so I added a little more green. And then it became the same color green <laughs> as my green. So I decided, never mind, we won't use that. We'll do something else instead. Um, but you can mix your own colors here too, which I think is really cool too. Obviously, just like with your inks and, and other stuff if you're coloring your own paste. But the powders, again, they don't add the extra moisture, which I think is neat. Uh, so I went ahead, spread on that top blue, grabbed some more paste, and you saw me clean my palette knife before I grabbed more paste so I didn't contaminate the whole thing. And this time I'm adding some purple. That violet powder is really pretty, but it's really vibrant. So I'm grabbing some of that blue. I'll mix that in too. And then this is going to give me sort of a a royal blue kind of with a, a purpley hue. And I just kind of finished up this panel with it. And it ends up being really, really pretty. I like these. I like both of these with the modeling paste a lot.
It's funny, as you make the panels, some become your favorite and some you think, eh. And my least favorite panel ended up becoming my most favorite card. <laughs> so here are the two panels. Again, you can see that I let them dry. They didn't warp. I, I didn't have to use my heat gun or anything. They didn't warp. And I did just kind of, um, when the edges were dry, I, I sloughed off any with my finger there. So let's take a look at all of the panels. First was the watercolor technique. Then we sprinkled the powder onto wet paper versus dry paper. And then our two paste panels. And of course the video is more fun if I show you completed cards, right? Um, but this is a technique video, so I, I'm just gonna kind of skip ahead to the finished cards. Those are the two watercolor panels. And that, that second panel with the splatter on it, it was my least favorite, but when I turned it into perfume bottles, it's my favorite card. <laughs> this is that panel. It's more speckled. That's the one that I had the water first and then the powder. And this panel ended up being um, more vibrant and watercolory looks, but that was where I put the powder down first and then sprayed it. And then of course the two paste panels, the red and purple combo where we just spread it across. And then the blue green panel was where we mixed it beforehand. And these last two cards, these are the cards I made on Stamp Wars with Nancy McCabe and the crew over there. I don't know if you've ever watched Stamp Wars, but it's a ton of fun. And Colorburst actually, or um, Contact Crafts actually sponsored the event, which was a lot of fun. I'll link it to you, or link, put a link in it here for you. <laughs> um, I've also got some other videos for you as well. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell for more fun videos. As always, my friends. Thanks for watching.